Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Nightmare Toys podcast. This is episode 23. I am Christy, and I'm joined by... Dylan. And Brian. Yay. Philip is not here today. He's having to be out front in the store area today, um, so he is not doing the podcast today. <laughs> so, um, first, we want to talk about CreepyCon. We just came back from CreepyCon in Ontario. It was so much fun. Very well-organized convention, don't you, you guys oh, yeah. think? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it was really well organized and um, loading in was the easiest Easy. we ever had. Loading out was the easiest Easy. we ever had. Yeah. Security seemed to know what they were doing and helped us, you know, get parked and get out. And cause it's always stressful. Like you have all these bunch of, you know, people, everyone's got to get in, everyone's got to get out and there's yeah. cars going everywhere. There's carts going everywhere. And so they did a pretty good job of organizing it and making it the easiest that we've ever had. Yeah, I totally agree. <laughs> out of all yeah. the ones that me and Philip have done. Yeah, that was really easy. Mm -hmm. um, but it was, God, it was like, it was so much fun. They had so many really cool guests, though. My favorite, I guess, was Eric Roberts. I don't know who was y'all's favorite guest. Uh, Kyoto Brothers. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. I got to talk with them about stop motion for like 10 minutes before the, the con started. I was kind of ran over. I noticed that they were all three over there and they didn't have a line or anything. So I was like, all right, here's my opportunity. So I went and talked to them and they were just all three super sweet, just like, just super happy to talk to me and. And yeah, because I mean, obviously they do a lot of stop motion, and I love that. So we just talked about that for a while, and it was really cool. For yeah. anybody who doesn't know who they are, they uh, did Killer Clowns. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Critters. They've Critters. worked on like a, a, a bunch of movies. They've yeah. done like oh, yeah. so much really cool stuff. But yeah, but Killer Clowns was the one that they directed. Right. Yeah, it was like their movie start to finish. So. Yeah, and I talked to them about the Alien Christmas short that they did for Netflix. A, uh, a what? Alien Christmas. Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah, it's like a s stop motion uh, <laughs> short that they did for Netflix. Oh, cool. Oh, I didn't see that. I have to check that out. Is it still on there? Yeah, it's still on there. Oh, okay. Alien Christmas. Mm -hmm. Cool. And then, Dylan, I know you, well, both you guys like the... Um, what was the wild bills <laughs> <laughs> yeah. wild bills, wild so bills root beer. Beer. yeah oh yeah. my gosh they were drinking this root beer like the entire weekend all sugared up like Hell so yeah. many different flavors hey, you tell us it's bottomless we're gonna hold you to that <laughs> yeah it was really good i mean i just i loved like i love craft root beer and like craft sodas and all that and they had like an orange cream soda which is kind of like my favorite kind of soda that and mountain dew and um, theirs was really good, and it it's just a it's it's a really smart idea. I'm sure they made a bunch of money, but also it's it's a good deal if you're going to be there for the weekend mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. So it, it just makes sense all around. You basically pay. There's different levels that you can pay for, like that's basically just the size and coolness of your mug. But I like the simple, cheapest one anyways, just a you know, uh, stainless steel mug, and it's like 25 bucks, and then uh, the whole weekend. You can just get refills and they have like a bunch of barrels with uh, yeah, like really a tap neat. that you just fill up yourself and they had like, I don't know, seven different flavors. And they had a line. Yeah. Every time um, I walked over in that direction where they were at, they had a line. Yeah. You know. I'm sure they made a lot of money because I Yo, saw a I'm lot sure. of people with, yeah. with the mugs. I did too, yeah. It's totally worth it because I mean, if you went to the snack bar, like you get, you know, a bottle of Sprite for $5, mm -hmm. you know, so it's like 25 bucks for like a really good you know and there's different flavors and it's unlimited so you can just get even just a little bit and try mm -hmm. every single one and uh the orange cream i think was both of our favorites yeah, right? yeah. Mm -hmm. oh the sarsaparilla wasn't your favorite i love the sarsaparilla but the orange cream, orange was my cream. Favorite. that's just kind of like my favorite soda i don't know i mean root beer's in top three too yeah. but i, was like like I always get the uh you didn't care for the vanilla cream not as much but i think there might have been an issue with the mixture when i got it um but it was it wasn't my favorite out of all of them. But like I like the birch root beer was good and the regular root beer was good and sarsaparilla is just like a fancy root beer and that was my favorite of the root beers. Mm -hmm. But um, the orange cream soda was it was like it was hard to like not get that yeah. every time because it was just it's so good liquid creamsicle like you yeah. can't go wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know orange. I tried yours. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like you you just couldn't go wrong unless you know the syrup or carbonation was off. Yeah. Then at that point, it's just orange soda. Yeah, we, we <laughs> went over there at one point, and, and that was when I got the vanilla one, and, and it was just it was just off. And so I went back in like 30 minutes and just dumped it out, got another one, and it was it was fine again. Yeah. So, you know, just like with any soda thing, there's a mixture that can, you know, you've all like gone to Panda Express or something, oh, and yeah. you get a Sprite and you got to take a drink of it, and it's just soda water. Like that'll oh, happen yeah, to anyone. But, you know, after a half hour or whatever, I went back and everything was back to normal. 
Didn't really they cool. have like a thing where um, you can keep the mug or mm-hmm. whatever, and then another convention you can use yeah, it again? Yeah, any mm-hmm. convention. I I think they said it was like it's five bucks. Five bucks. Five, just pay five bucks. Yeah. So so, so if they're at another con anywhere, just bring that thing. And yeah. And then um, for one one of the guys told uh, me, so like they put like an orange like wristband around the handle, so mm-hmm. you they know that you paid for it. Um, but there's like a little QR code on it. They'll give you a discount on their website. Oh, they, on the mug? N- probably, well, they, they, they have bottle, bottle versions. Oh, oh okay. So they yeah. told me that. I'm like, well, I'm screwed because I'm going to order a bunch of this bit, <laughs> the orange <laughs> the one. cream soda. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would love to order some of that. Like, I usually I'll go to, like, Cracker Barrel in their gift shop. They'll have, like, a lot of old sodas and stuff, mm-hmm. and they have, like, a Sioux City sarsaparilla that I get a lot. But then they also have Stewart's orange cream soda. Yeah. And that's, like, where I got addicted to orange cream soda was just I would just get a six-pack of that. Um and it and it i would say like the wild bills was just as good if not better you know so i would like to try their bottled version because obviously from the tap right off of it it's going to taste different than like you know right. being bottled so i'm sure it's really good i think it's just a really cool idea at a horror convention though too just to provide something like that that type of service yeah and it not be alcohol you know right yeah it'd be something for everybody to drink or whatever yeah. so yeah i thought that was really cool and the whole setup was really neat so and like i said mm-hmm. i seen the line there the entire time yeah it's cool they like they just they drive in this big trailer so they just have you know a truck with like a a Mm -hmm. really big trailer and that's their booth and they just put the trailer there and they open up these doors and like i said there's like you know the person doing the ringing people up and giving you the mug and then right to the left of them there's like a separate line for refills and you just walk right up to it and there's like you know it's like old-timey like barrels Mm -hmm. wooden, you know not real wood but like wooden barrels with a little draft spigot and you just fill it up which you're in the our creepy con video which is on our youtube right now about creepy con uh you're in there doing getting your drink too some more. <laughs> <I noticed> that. <laughs> yep. so yeah watch the our video out here on youtube uh on creepy con that's already out so yeah. what else was a highlight for y'all at the show i mean we were pretty busy yeah, yeah we didn't get to walk around too much because yeah, we, we, we were just constantly busy. reading people up it was sunday really was good. i think the only time we kind of got to walk around and kind of breathe mostly because we didn't have anything left to say <laughs> yeah. no we, we almost sold out of everything the first uh, day like we were just constantly ringing people up it mm-hmm. was people in line waiting to get rung up it was the busiest one that i've been a part of i don't yeah. know like before i started doing all the cons if there was a busier one or not but that seemed to be like that's a super successful no, convention. I'm, yeah i mean every vendor i talked to was really extremely happy and everybody mm-hmm. was doing well yeah and that, that's good when everybody's doing well and, and, and if when i walked around and i looked down the aisles i mean there was just people at everybody's booth there's somebody mm, at everybody's yeah. booth it was just packed with people everybody's buying stuff everybody's getting autographs it was a it was really good convention i thought yeah, yeah. It was the first time they did that convention, yeah, right? Yeah, first and time. It just went really well. Like we said, it, it was did. really well organized, and they already have the same venue booked for the same time next mm-hmm. year, so mm-hmm. we'll definitely be there. Yeah. It was, it was just really fun all around. Yeah, yeah, I highly recommend it. You know, if you're looking to go to a different convention next year, Creepy Con. Yeah, yeah. I highly recommend that one. Yeah, they said that they were going to add more stuff for next year. So. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like yep. some other rooms. Yeah. Oh, cool. Maybe so more they, photo ops and things like that. Well, yeah. and they said that they wanted to do more vendors. So. Okay. Yeah, maybe like a, like Awaken the Spirits or yeah. Monster Palooza, where it's kind of you have some vendors here and then you kind of go down a hallway and there's a whole other. Yeah. yeah. Which, mm-hmm. and I, I think that was also a positive is every vendor was pretty much different. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like there there wasn't everyone selling the same no, everybody stuff. Everybody has some good stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I know we all bought something. Yeah. yeah I'm <laughs> trying to remember the name of the, the dude that we bought. The shadow boxes. The shadow boxes. I room? don't know. I can't. I uh, have Rain my House. card at home, but I can't remember. Rain, Rain House? Or no, no, no the, that's the your knives. shadow boxes. Yeah, the shadow box. Um, yeah, Rittenhouse does like these the custom knives. painted knives, which we got like ten of, and they're up on the website now. We put them mm-hmm. up, but um, no, it's this, it's this really cool guy, and and he does these things where they're like they're shadow boxes, so he builds these like three D, um, movie posters basically, mm-hmm. and um, Christy and I both got one. And I got a Halloween 3 one. You got a Halloween 3 mm-hmm. one as well. Mine was like a smaller square. It was like the witch, and she has like her hands. But again, it's hard to explain, but it's like there's there's different like levels to it. So I wish we, I should have figured out his I name so we could I shut I him out right now. Card. But um, I didn't he just did an card. awesome job with that. And um, like so mine has like little <laughs> toy snakes like going mm-hmm. in and out of like the eyes of, of the witch mask. And it's that classic old uh, witch poster. 
from that one and so yeah it has a confetti on the bottom and but he did all kinds of ones he did really big elaborate ones that lit up like he had a yeah. creep show booth one that was really cool he did a lot of different yeah. movies like a yeah. lot of obscure movies and yeah. stuff too so yeah and my halloween 3 one has cochran in it so that's really cool i haven't um I haven't hung it up yet. I haven't showed anybody yet. Oh, that was the first thing I did <laughs> when I got home. No, I haven't yeah. done mine yet because I need a, I need a taller chair or a taller person to hang it where I want to hang it. Yeah. <laughs> I put it right next to where my Tom Atkins signature is. And it, and I, it literally, like, I have... That's going to be, this, like, how I'm going to do mine. Yeah, yeah. I had this, like, Tom Atkins 8x10, and then I had mm -hmm. this, like, little haunted mansion thing that I had to move from somewhere else. It was just I just put it there because... And then there's a They Live poster... And then that little haunted mansion thing, I just took that off and moved it somewhere else and put the H3 thing there. And it just like fits perfectly. I have this little carpenter <laughs> shrine now. It's growing. There you go. But yeah, it was really cool. Yeah, those yeah. were cool. Um, I was there. He'll be at Cult Classic yeah. with us. Oh, yeah. Yeah, his shadow boxes are amazing. I want to get um, a chopping mall one next, I think. I was there. He had a sleepaway or slumber party massacre too. I know. Yeah, he had like, like a, he had a, all of I, them. He had a sleepaway <laughs> camp one, I think I saw at one point. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, when we do, when we, we'll do a video at Cult Classic, and we'll try to go over to his booth and mm -hmm. show up because I feel bad that we didn't, that we don't know his name. Yeah, I can't but um, he was a really cool Sorry. guy, and he did really cool stuff. Mm -hmm. And so we'll we'll definitely shout him out during yeah. Cult Classic yeah, in a video. Oh yeah, definitely. What else did what did you get, Brian? Um, uh, from our friends at Spooky Baby, um. Both me and Philip got baseball jerseys oh, yeah. from them. So mine has the classic uh, Scooby Gang in the van on the back. Yeah, uh, she gave me a Chucky wreath, and I hung yeah. that up near my Chucky stuff. It looks great. Yeah, so I, I don't remember which one Philip got. He got a black one. Yeah, so. and it has, like, Pennywise on it and yeah. something something in the back. I can't remember what it was now. Yeah, so then, then uh, I forget the life of me can't remember the people that were next to us but they had really cool um etched glasses oh like, yeah like mm -hmm. pint glasses so i got a uh, sam one and then you got some autographs i got a bunch of autographs you got all the killer clowns people all the killer clowns <laughs> um i got a weird science poster with uh yeah judy and suzanne um we both met Mm -hmm. Clint Howard. Yes. Nicest guy ever. Clint Howard. That was awesome. <laughs> I had him uh, sign a Wraith 8 by 10 I had to. I love the Wraith. Uh, both met James Raymar. James Raymar, yep. Uh, I got Dylan to meet his one of his heroes, Keith <laughs> David. Keith David. Yeah, he came over to the booth and took a picture with all of us. That was fun. He's a nice guy. Yeah, he was fun. Which, yeah, it was just, it's still mind-blowing, like, that these toy companies won't contact the actors to see if they want one. Like yeah, he, like want, he, <laughs> he he was going to buy one from us. So I'm like, dude, no. A Goliath. Oh. Yeah, but yeah. they didn't even send him a Goliath. It's weird. I mean, I I saw like an, you know, some kind of like unboxing type video for his They Live uh, Frank figure. Mm -hmm. Um, so I don't know if he got to keep that one or not, but yeah, but he didn't he didn't have a Goliath, so. Yeah, so that's what his handler came over. He's like, "Hey, Keith wants to buy one that was put to the side." And I'm just like, yeah, no, that's not happening. <laughs> yeah, you can help. Yeah. So I, really I so I, I like walked over there and um, like this is yours. Yeah, you, know, you shouldn't have to pay for your figure. <laughs> yeah. We've been a lot of actors. Yeah, their so, product, haven't we? <laughs> yeah. So so <laughs> I feel and like it, they need it. It's like so <laughs> he, he was very appreciative. I'm like, is there any chance we could get a photo with you know you at the booth? He's like, absolutely. Yep, and he came came and on over. Came at and came at the very end. We got our photo with him, and yeah, he's yeah, he was a really cool dude. I mean, I'm a huge fan of his acting. He's in a lot of movies, and mm -hmm. he's always really good. And um, so yeah, that that was really cool to meet him and met Nick Castle briefly. He just walked by the booth. He was just kind of walking around, checking everything out. Y yeah, and we so had um, Daniel Harris came by the booth again, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. and then Spencer from Iceland Kills came by came the booth. By. Yep. Yeah, we had a good spot. We had yeah. uh, right there by the front doors. You walk in, yeah, see so. us. So that was a good spot. Hopefully, we get that <laughs> spot again next year. Yeah. Yeah, they yeah, said was, we, we could get the same spot. <laughs> yeah, it was funny. Like when we had like set everything up, and it, you know we had a big ten by thirty booth, and it was all like really well stocked with a lot of good product, and it looked really good. And so all, before we opened all the vendors were like walking by and like anyone who passed was like, whoa, like this looks awesome. You guys mm -hmm. did a great job with the booth. Like you must've done this before and all this stuff. And they were like, oh, this is really cool. And all these vendors wanting to buy stuff and everything. 
And then like two hours into the convention, like the same people would be walking by and they'd be like, oh, this looks barren. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like They were like, what happened? And we were like, we sold everything. Right? Yeah. Like it, it, it sold really fast. And it wasn't like we didn't bring enough stuff. We packed the van more than we ever have. Like we couldn't, f we hardly could fit our backpacks into the van. Yeah. Like we brought so much stuff yeah. and it just, it just all sold. So it was awesome. I mean, that's, that's what you want. Yeah. Oh, er yeah everything definitely. you sell, you don't have to carry later. So yeah. yeah Cause like Saturday. Yeah. And then Sunday was like, dang. Um. Yeah. <laughs> we were just trying to scramble to figure yeah, out yeah. how to like, like put Squeeze like things a together <laughs> to make it look like more. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But again, it's like, I mean, you, but there's we're nothing you can. selling on Sunday. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. We, we did really well on Sunday. Like, yeah. Sunday was like a regular convention day. Yeah. Yeah. And Saturday was Saturday like was nitrous Saturday oxide. Chaos. Yeah. yeah. Which, and then was. a lot of those vendors stopped by us as we were loading the van back up because they were impressed how our van is set up. Oh, uh, yeah. With the grid wall and everything. Yeah. We have a. Got to get organized. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, we built this. We built this thing that, I mean, Philip saw someone doing it at mm -hmm. some convention and, and so picked his brain and he told him how to do it. And then now anytime we do that, we always have other vendors that are like, oh my God, that's genius. And it's just like, I mean, it's it, it's boring to explain on here, but it's just a way of being able to get your grid wall out first before all your product mm -hmm. and set up everything and then you can get your product out. And then the opposite, you could take all your product off of the booth, put it into the van and then get your grid wall in under it. Cause and it's just this, you know, simple, thing that me and philip built in the right. back but yeah it's it works, it works really though. really well and it's always cool like giving away those secrets and stuff too because we're, we're like just pay it forward like you know we didn't think of it we saw someone else do yep. it <laughs> we'll just pay it forward so if yeah, you see us at a convention a we'll show you how i think to do it, it was because yeah. i remember it being cold and snowy outside so i want to say it was flashback weekend yeah. that we yeah, seen really somebody cool. do that and we're like oh yeah yeah I, do I, I love sharing that stuff and like same thing with um with the dollies that we use, there's all these random like little things. Like if you're like just a fan of horror, it doesn't matter. So it's kind of, I won't get too in detail with it, but there's just all these little things. Like it's a pain in the ass to, to get all your product in, set up a booth, tear it all down and leave. And so like these little things that make it easier makes a huge difference. So when people Definitely. see something like, oh my God, like, like our carts, like our dollies, for example, there's a way that you can set them up to carry a bunch of grid wall safely at once. And like, and people have seen us doing that. Like, oh my God, I've had those carts for years and it never occurred to me to do that. And it's like, we just saw someone else doing it. So <laughs> it's fun, you know, you meet all these people and you see behind the scenes and, and help each other out. So yeah. it's really cool. Oh yeah, definitely. That's yeah. the best part for the cons for me is meeting the other vendors and yeah. stuff. And oh like, yeah, I love going around and talking to everybody and just and shopping and doing all that. Yeah, I like yeah. socializing with everybody. and seeing everybody that you know that follows us on instagram and youtube and all that fun stuff too and coming to the booth and saying hi to all of us and recognizing us yeah yeah that's always really cool mm -hmm. like it's cool too because it's like you know you can go to any restaurant or or movie theater or grocery store or whatever and like you'll never be recognized by anybody but then at a convention you'll get like recognized mm -hmm. a lot so it's really cool because you know like it's it's not like you get to meet people that actually like your stuff and, right. and and follow what you do and like and it's people. not just like you know like oh you're in that band or whatever i saw your face on a poster and you just i want to take a picture with you and leave it's like it's more of like a personal connection from people that actually follow your your work and stuff so it's totally always really agree. cool when you when you meet people like that yeah you guys are the faces of the company me and <laughs> phil just sit there <laughs> <laughs> whatever <laughs> All right. Well, moving on. So we all agree CreepyCon was Excellent. a really, really so great convention. So excited for it next year. Yeah. So again, yeah. highly recommend that convention make plans now to go to California next year to go CreepyCon and come see us. Yeah. And it's just on Saturday and Sunday too, which I like that. Yeah. I actually yeah. like just the two days. It's also nice to be like, if they let you set up the day before, you just kind of get there, get everything set, set up, up and, and just leave it, go get dinner and go to sleep. Yeah. And then um, if you, uh, you know, and then the next day you're just already set up, you're already set up and then it's 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 nice. Because yeah, there's some where, you know, you're setting up all morning, Friday morning, but yet it starts yeah. at yeah. five, six o'clock that, that yeah. day too. Yeah, and so then it, we're tired. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, like I said, it's a lot of, it's a lot of work to get all that stuff in. Yeah. But uh, like we said also with, with CreepyCon, not only was it really well organized and all that, um, I just really love the venue for yeah. vendors because it's just this, re like there's the parking lot that you, you know, you can only get into if you're a vendor. And then it's this like slight incline 
and then you're in the convention hall. Mm -hmm. Like usually you're going up some giant slow elevator and having to, you know, stay in a like wait in line to get on that elivator and, and up and down with all these different trips. Or then you're Walking going through forever, a hallway, going yeah. through a kitchen, going around this corner and having to find out where it is and, and all this stuff. And that one's literally you just load up your stuff on the cart go, go right 50 in. feet and you're in the exhibit <laughs> and hall right so. back out yeah it was yeah so, it was so it was easy. probably the definitely the easiest one that we've ever been a part of and i would say it was probably no, it the really most successful was. too it, it really went well yeah um and this was in ontario california in case y'all didn't know mm. <laughs> which is closer than la too which is yeah. nice it was I like thought a three hour drive like, for us yeah mm-hmm. i thought it was gonna be like Wouldn't four that. hours and usually where you basically you get off the the 15 and then you're on this new freeway for like another hour, mm-hmm. but pretty much you got on that new freeway and then you almost exited immediately and you're like at the exhibit hall. It's really cool. And the convention center was nice. It, I like oh. how open mm-hmm. and spacious it was. Everybody can breathe and walk and you're not like all crowded. Yeah, I like like them being at convention centers. <laughs> And yeah. they were really good with the security and, mm-hmm. you know, with the whole COVID thing and making sure everybody was doing what they're supposed to be doing. And, um, but not everybody being was overly out. like. Right. And not being, yeah. You know, well, no. they wouldn't let Philip in with lunch well, yeah. or a knife, <laughs> even though he was a vendor. Other than that. <laughs> other than that. Other than that, yeah, um, <laughs> that was hilarious. The So the first day he went and got Wendy's and he came back and, and he, he had to like convince someone to let him ba- let him in it's like look man like i'm working just like you this is my lunch it's not like i'm bringing outside food in or whatever and so he finally convinced that dude to let him in but then so on the second day he put all the wendy's in a toonie terrors box yep. <laughs> and smuggled it inside but yeah then they wouldn't let him in with his knife and it's like i need this to to do our job like it's 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 a tool that i need and he'd been in and out already yeah, <laughs> yeah it, like i know i sat time. and watched it was like the very I, end of the day yeah. i stood there like because oh, i went through and i was just like what is walk going on and he just kept taking stuff out like he's at the airport and i'm like what is going on right now and yeah. he, he could see him shaking his head and then he had to leave and so, yeah, yeah. So other, other than that, that other than that thing, maybe they just didn't like the way philip looked <laughs> maybe they just didn't and trust he had his badge and everything <laughs> yeah but like Again, like, you know, that's the one gripe. Everything went really well. And, yeah. and and surprisingly, like, security seemed to know what they were doing. Like, if I asked security a question, they seemed to have the answer, which is so right. rare for a convention. Exactly, yeah. And no one ever knows anything. And so <laughs> it, it was good. It was really yeah. good. But next year, we're bringing a bunch of bubble wrap for you. Bubble wrap? Right. Because he got what hurt three times within 24 oh. hours. Oh. <laughs> I always hurt myself a lot. <laughs> like, literally. Like, it yeah. seems like, bubble wrap. like every hour he's, like, hurting himself. Yeah. I always hurt myself a lot. I still have this paper cut. I got a tetanus shot because I had stepped on a rusty screw. That was awesome. And then you <laughs> crushed your fingers with the grid while loading yeah. it in. I crushed my finger. Yeah, it was it was awesome. I, I recently, like, just whacked the – it still hurts. Whacked the crap out of my shin. Oh. And, like, within, like, 30 seconds, the bump was, like, stuck up further than my kneecap. It was so huge. And that was, like, a week ago. And then while we were loading up to leave, I hit it again on the tailgate. But I seem to hit my Ow. shin on the tailgate every time, at least once. But it just sucked this time because it was in the exact same spot. <laughs> But yeah, that's just my fault for being an idiot. <laughs> God, <laughs> I always hurt myself. <laughs> the screw wasn't my fault. That shouldn't have been there. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. Well, moving on, we do have Zach Galligan coming um, tomorrow, Saturday, um, from one to four for a signing. It's his birthday and it's Valentine's Day, so we're gonna have a big ba- Valentine's birthday party for Zach. Um, so in honor of that, we decided to watch Gremlins 1 and 2 and talk about Gremlins. So, Brian, I'll have you go first. Okay. What's your thought on Gremlins 1 and 2, hon? Um, so I actually saw Gremlins 2 before I saw Gremlins 1. Really? <laughs> yeah, so Okay. Um I remember it was it was always playing on like HBO. So like they never played the first one, which Mm-mm. is which is weird. So, like, I grew up with Gremlins 2, and then I think I was probably, like, a teenager when I saw the original Gremlins. Oh, okay. So, so for me, personally, Gremlins 2 is better than Gremlins 1. Not to say Gremlins itself is a bad movie, because it's not. It, um, it's just, like, me and Dylan always talk about it. It's just, I just watch it at Christmas time. Right. So, for me, it's a Christmas movie, whereas Gremlins 2, I could watch it all year long. Good point. So, but I mean the the um, you could tell with Gremlins too though they kind of went like the marketing route, like it's all like, you know, 
intellectual properties just like thrown in to like sell toys and stuff which i mean i guess it worked so it seemed like it was more set in like a future part two there's a lot of there's a lot of social and political commentary in in gremlins too very on the nose Mm -hmm. and um very it's also like meta obviously like joe dante does all that stuff and I really like the Looney Tunes like intro Oh because the movie I is a, it, it's it's live action Looney Tunes yeah. like yeah. that is what it is and this, so they tell you what it is right away and um, yeah I thought I thought it was pretty fun I thought they were kind of they made fun of themselves a lot and they also like I love um, when the gremlin like pops out of the control panel and attacks that guy yeah. who's like doing all the smart ass comments that they probably heard for years after gremlins like about the yeah. time zones and I thought that was really fun yeah, was and, and I like how they brought Leonard Moulton in doing it because he he's a movie critic and he uh hated the original gremlins right so they had to a cameo on gremlins too and get attacked by the gremlins which yeah. is funny which is funny all the cameos in it are pretty cool though mm-hmm. yeah i would say hogan is mm-hmm. really good in it yeah um i just i i wish that i could have got to experience that moment like in theaters because it's so funny because i mean back in the day when that movie came out it would have been yeah. shown on film so you would probably for a minute literally think that everything was screwed yeah yeah because like the the, the yeah. it burns out and then you see the shadow and it's like oh okay it's a gag and then it just keeps going on and on and on for a while like i love that yeah and then they they do the nod back to the original gremlins where like they just want to watch snow white and the seven dwarves yeah mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's funny yeah the other funny like thing that they like make fun of themselves for is that like moment when phoebe cates just like completely halts the storyline to like tell this personal depressing story again yeah, <laughs> was it. and then it's like yeah, okay and then bill is like yeah we don't have time for yeah, right. we we don't and it's just this. so silly it's like about abe lincoln it's yeah just, like, i know what? that's like, why i was like what in the heck it's just so, <laughs> so bonkers um but i love it that that moment in the first gremlins is one of my favorite parts i'm really happy that um that he fought to keep that in because that was something that like nobody wanted in the movie except for joe dante and he mm. just fought and fought and fought and and got to keep it in and i think it's great i love it i love that they just end up in this abandoned spot and she tells this super just silly sad hilarious depressing I story it was funny yeah. oh it's it's funny yeah, it's yeah funny. but it's also it's just like depressing <laughs> well yeah <laughs> well her story in the version was depressing <laughs> yeah yeah exactly but. but yeah i love it um I love I love the first one too. I've seen the first one a lot more than the second one, um, just because of you know I watch it like every year during Christmas, um, so I've seen it a lot more times. But the second one, I don't know which one. I, I probably enjoy watching the second one more. I guess maybe because I haven't seen it as many times. But I think also just because like all the Gremlins, you know, like um, with Rick Baker's crew, like they were trying to get Rick Baker to do gremlins 2 for a long time and he kept just saying no he just wasn't interested but then there he was like okay like if you let me make a bunch of different gremlins like like the first movie um it's basically just one gremlins mold you know like right. they're all made yeah. in the same mold they're all painted the and same and then they're just striped with his hair yeah. right yeah they, they all kind of look the same a little bit yeah and it works like for the movie like it it, it there's no issue with it like in the first movie no. but it's like to just do that again like just rick baker wasn't really interested and so i think one thing that makes the movie so good is just all the special effects porn in the whole movie mm-hmm. yeah i think that's another reason why i like it is because of all the different gremlins like you mm-hmm. had the back gremlin the brainiac mm-hmm. uh the spider which I, was yeah. just uh spike. creepy really cool and then the de- the demolition yeah which I, I never noticed there's like one of the demolition guys is taking a chainsaw through like bazooka ammo yeah <laughs> I've, i've like i just noticed that like for the first you know time which one my the... favorite was though the one with the tomatoes oh yeah, yeah the right. vegetarian one. Gremlin, yeah. i feel like i just wanted to like pop a tomato i don't yeah. know well <laughs> I bet it was funny like they're <laughs> they're really using cool. him to make cocktails for their gremlins yeah i know yeah, that was my favorite one uh that one's really cool because that's the one where you really see the transformation the rest of them it, like like the spider gremlin happens in shadow which is really cool mm-hmm. and there's there's other ones where you just kind of see bits and pieces but like there's really a metamorphosis like mm-hmm. on screen for the <laughs> for the vegetable gremlin and i love the effect of the ears where um they turned into like you know like leaves like lettuce mm-hmm. leaves um 
and you know i don't know exactly how it was done but there's pretty obviously there's some kind of like under structure like a hard structure that's like the leaf the leafy veins and stuff and then there's the latex on top of it and then they suck all the air out of it and so it just like kind of shrinks wrap shrink wraps around that that under structure and and then you know it kind of cuts a little bit and then it comes back and he's like still transforming like so that was just like really cool um special effects and i think norman cabrera sculpted the vegetable gremlin which is another reason i like him a lot yeah i like him i like that one that's my favorite yeah he's really cool i think my favorite is lenny he's lenny? yeah he's like the really really doofy one mm -hmm. with like the kind of uh rabbit looking snout um, oh, the buck teeth one yeah yeah, buck teeth. yeah i like him a lot um, What's the one with the goofy eyes? Daffy. That's Daffy. Daffy. Okay, yeah. so I thought. Yeah, he's wild. He stresses me out. <laughs> <laughs> he it's stresses funny. you out? <laughs> yeah, well, one thing about these movies, like, as much as I love gremlins and I love monsters, obviously, I love creatures and puppets and blah, blah, blah. Like, I love that. And it's, you know, if it didn't have that, I wouldn't love the movie as much. But um, they really do a good job just with making you, like, love Gizmo and mm -hmm. and and. Uh, Zach Galligan's character and all that like every time I watch the first one or the second one there's a part of me that just doesn't want anything to go wrong like and that's like I think just really good filmmaking like I literally just kind of want like Zach Galligan to just have his friend Gizmo and just be happy together yeah like yeah. like and I <laughs> I just love <laughs> so it's like it would, and but especially so Daffy's really when everything really starts <laughs> going getting chaotic you know because she takes she takes uh, Daffy home thinking that it's Gizmo and he's just destroying the place. But Gizmo is just the sweetest, cutest, like well-behaved creature of all time. <laughs> and so it's just His like... little sad expressions yeah. are so cute. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he's... I mean, I, and then he goes into Rambo mode. Yeah. Yeah. He loves <laughs> Rambo. Yeah, but you gotta become war. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. It is but, funny. Um, I just love Gizmo too. Like yeah. I... Um, I my dog's name is Gizmo and so I'm like watching the movie like snuggling Gizmo and I'm just like that's you and he's Aww. all sad and like so like I, I just I, I love Gremlins and Gremlins yeah. too and I love the Mountain Dew commercial that they did oh the new one so like they yeah. they did um it's like a Super Bowl Super Bowl last year or something yeah where it was Zach and Gizmo sitting on the couch and Gizmo's like Mountain Dew he's like you're gonna be careful right you're not gonna pour it on yourself Gizmo's like Mm -hmm. And he just douses himself with a bottle, <laughs> <laughs> and then all all of them just start popping out. Yeah. And you just see Zach. He's like, "Ah, oh, here we go again." Yeah, <laughs> that's another but, cool thing about about Gremlins too is when all the Gremlins start popping out of those like little like blisters on the mm -hmm. Gremlins. The Gremlins get these blisters and then they pop out. And there's like these little tiny yeah. Gremlins like growing. Like it's just yeah, really cool special effects. They they kind of briefly showed it with the first one when uh, Spite or. Uh, Stripe. Stripe Stripe hops into the pool, mm -hmm. like they briefly show, but this, show it but the, the second one they yeah. fully show it. Yeah, and you can like see them like translucent, like inside, like like mm -hmm. you know, like waking up and incubating, and then, like splitting out, and like I think, I think I don't know for sure, but that when you see the super close up of it, like splitting out, and like 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 mm -hmm. I think that that stop motion. Um, I don't know for sure, but it, it looked like it could have been. There's a few a few things in there. I think they use stop motion for. Um, I think the flying like bat gremlin, a lot of it's like a puppet on a string and then a lot of it's a ham puppet, like the close ups, but I, I don't know for sure, but I feel like they use stop motion a little bit in that. Um, but I always love that. Like, and it, it, what's cool about this, about gremlins too, as well is in the first one, uh, Gizmo's always just like in a backpack or on a table. He's just like a really simple hand puppet. All the gremlins are just super yeah. simple hand puppets and everything's kind of done with like sound design and just fancy editing and stuff. But um, like pretty pretty quickly in Gremlins 2, you get to see Gizmo like walking, you know, on the sidewalk. Dancing. And, and the dancing. <laughs> yeah, and dancing is so yeah, that's, cute. And yeah, yeah. That, that was really the only CGI, right? For the most part. I don't think it was CGI. It was, or it was a blue screen. It was green screen, yeah, green with, screen. with a rod puppet, I think. And then that's why, like, you'll see, like, the whole movie kind of looks a little different when those parts happen. Right. Because, um... Because it happens again with the bat gremlin. Yeah, yeah. Like, 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 the, the, the you know, the gizmo is, and the bat gremlin, like, they're lit with, like, studio lights or whatever in a studio on a green screen. And then, and then the background is, you know, matted or whatever, you know, replaced behind them. So, like, the, the whole thing looks a little different. Like, that's the only issue where you can really see like that something changed and like the Harryhausen movies were always like that too because the Harryhausen stuff was really cool because they would um he would rear project everything mm -hmm. and it's a whole process of explaining but like so 
um, he would like they would shoot the regular movie and then he'd mat stuff off and then they would rear project it and then he would put the puppet in front of that rear projection and then like take a new picture basically and so anytime where there was a creature effect it was like the whole film stock would change and it would be like more washed out and less vibrant but it looked good still I almost wish that I do wish that they would have just made the whole like just shot the whole movie like rear projected again so then whenever the creatures came in it wouldn't have changed it yeah. would have just stayed but you know people want everything to be as crisp as possible so it's like you can't really do it back then but I, I feel like it, it would have been better if they just made the whole movie that rear projected look and then when the creatures came in it, it would be seamless but that's a good point beggars can't be choosing <laughs> i like it when the background turns into like the gargoyle mm -hmm. so i cool. would love that gargoyle i was thinking that too he be makes a, a cool gargoyle that'd be a really cool thing for for trick-or-treat studios to make if they did like a foam version yeah it would be awesome uh, yeah, that's really cool yeah that that would just be i mean of course like a hardcore like stone or cement one would be cool yeah. too but um if they just made one out of like you know latex uh, cut foam yeah la latex would work these can paint it or they mm. could just make it like if they can um what's it called when they cut foam i don't know i'll think of the word later <laughs> after we're done you'll think of it <laughs> i don't know <laughs> there's a way to cut foam like that but it'd probably be more expensive that way they could just make a you know like i said a latex mold uh latex and then fill it with foam and yeah. paint it gray well, cool. at least we got the three Mogwais coming. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm really excited for those. You get Gizmo, like, life-size. Yeah. I was saying you get Daffy, and I forgot that they're doing. Was it Lenny? I think it's Lenny. Is it I think Lenny? they're doing Lenny. I hope so. I think it's Lenny that they're doing, yeah. I believe. I don't know. I, ju I just remember Daff Daffy. I, I'm like, yeah, we're getting a puppet for that. <laughs> and Liz yeah. was just like, why? Yeah. <laughs> Daffy really stresses me. Yes. <laughs> we have to have all of them. <laughs> well, what about Greta? We haven't talked about Greta. Uh, we haven't mentioned yeah, her which, too. She looked really cool. I got. I kind of want to know what happens after the end of the movie, right? Because you see Greta with um. I the forgot the guy. The right hand yeah. man, the true the right guy. She's, yeah. Is she in a wedding dress? Yeah, she's, yeah, she's in, in the wedding, wedding dress. dress, and the guy just kind of like goes with he, it. He just yeah. Starts, he, uh, yeah. His look is like. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> maybe, maybe Gremlins Three would be like a human <laughs> yeah. Gremlin hybrid, right? Which, and probably just him being on the phone was the funniest part. But things are half day off is generous. Yeah, yeah. That that whole dynamic with with him and and like the owner of Clamp. Like again, like I said, there's there's just a bunch of on the nose like political and and social commentary in the movie. And but it's like you know like this Clamp guy like he's. Like you think he's like this, you know, super evil, but he's just insanely naive and stupid mm -hmm. and but like well intentioned, but just like incorrect in his ways. He's just obviously the president. And then you have like, you know, the the guy who's actually kind of doing all this really evil, bad stuff and then reaping the benefits, but is actually like second in command. Mm -hmm. And that's, you yeah. know, blah, blah, blah. blah. But um, I like that, too. Yeah, I like Christopher Lee in it. Too. Oh, yeah. I love Christopher Lee. I love when he's like. Puts the He's tissue funny. in his pocket. I know. Yeah. It's so gross. And all I'm thinking, oh, yeah, check for COVID. <laughs> That's all I'm thinking as I'm watching yeah. that. And he's put it in. It, oh, and I'm just like, you're gross. But, yeah, I was saying, now that we have this one, I, I think it would be cool if they did Greta in the wedding dress. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think so, too. Or even, wasn't she wearing a red gown, too? Because she came up through a stage. She was about to do something oh, yeah. on the stage. That's yeah. a really and, like, cool a red thing gown. Too. That would have been a cool Funko Pop, like a yeah. different version of her, too. And I that. love the... Again, it's just Looney Tunes where there's just unexplained stuff like um, where like they do this whole um, production where it's like her face, you know, in those like tiles or whatever. Yeah. And then it like flips and like she comes out of it and yep. all that. And like even like the brain gremlin, his transformation is he just falls to the floor and he comes back and he's grown glasses for, out of nowhere. Yeah, he's you know, got glasses just, and he can talk. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's Looney Tunes. <laughs> yeah, you know? I love it. Uh, I love it. Yeah. I love Looney Tunes. I grew up with Looney Tunes. <laughs> but the first one, like, just to go back to the first one, is still, like, an awesome movie. Like, I, I, I might even maybe like the first one more. Like, I don't know. The second one's just definitely more fun, but the, the first one's just Absolutely. an awesome movie. Yeah, the, the first one's more of a darker serious tone a little bit more yeah serious. Where, where the second one is like that slapstick mm -hmm. yeah 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 it's like it, it i always say with yeah. the first one it's like it's like a it's like a family um christmas movie being attacked mm -hmm. by a horror movie right yeah and 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 that's what's so cool about that one and um and i and i just i mean like yeah i think i, I don't know if i said but chris Wayless is a person who did the 
the original puppets and and the eggs and like the pods or whatever and all that and those are just really cool designs and mm -hmm. like super good creations and then you know rick baker and his whole cinovation crew took that and you know really ran with it and turned it yeah. into something crazy but i hope awesome. someday we'll get to see the uh other cut of the original gremlins because it, it was more of like a r-rated oh yeah cut oh. to where they kill the mom and oh, oh yeah gotcha. everything yeah yeah uh, originally um gizmo was gonna turn into stripe and then die at the end and that was like how it was normally going but then whenever they got the gizmo puppet and he was like so cute and they kind of realized that they couldn't have the dynamic <laughs> yeah. with him and gizmo and just keep him normal but again it's like i really i really every time i watch it it's like I know what's gonna happen, <laughs> but I just want nothing that bad to happen and gives me right. to just be his friend. That's <laughs> <laughs> how I feel so. whenever my dog decides to start acting like a gremlin instead of a <laughs> gizmo. Gotta have the cute little character yeah, in there with so. all the little gremlins. Yeah, so I, I'm really excited for the cartoon coming out this year for it. Yeah, that should be cool. So it'll be. Wish they had the cartoon when I was a kid. Yeah. <laughs> so for me. I'm older, of course, so I grew up with Gremlins, and I've watched Gremlins at least one million times. I love the first one. Um, the second one did not come out until 1990. I didn't like it when it came out. I did not like the second one. I like it now, but when it came out, I did not like it. It just wasn't for me. I don't know why. I guess just because I was so stuck on Gremlins. It took me a long time to really like part two. Um, but now I appreciate it, and now I think it's funny. I guess I didn't like the whole funny aspect of it. I just thought it was stupid at mm -hmm. the time. So I just never really watched Gremlins 2 that much. I probably only watched it maybe five times. Um, but after watching it last night, I don't know. I like it better now. Um, more of appreciation for it. Um, I love all the Gremlins and all the different personalities. And it, it is really funny. And um, I don't know. I like, it. I like it better now than I did when I was a kid. So, yeah, that's all I really have to say about it. <laughs> I love Gremlins. I mean, I had Gremlins on my beta. <laughs> a beta? Wow. Yes. I had it recorded on another one. It was, I want to say it was Gremlins and Stand By Me were on the same tape. <laughs> Watched religiously. Um, <laughs> I also had the little records. I don't know if you've ever seen anybody have them, but they're, no. they're little little records. I think they came from Burger King back in the day, and there was five of them of Gremlin, and it told the whole story of the movie in little five little records. I don't know if you've ever seen anybody post those. Mm -hmm. No. Okay. That's cool. Yeah, I've heard about Google them, it. but I've never seen them. <laughs> I used to have those. I have no idea what I did to, with them because I've kept a lot of stuff over the years. I still have my gizmo. I have a gizmo, an original gizmo. When you shake it, it has a little squeaker on the inside, and it squeaks. Oh, so yeah. I still have that. I have the one from the early 2000s to where it like bobs its head and sings i don't know what that one is yeah mm -hmm. so it's like a life-size gizmo and he's just sitting but you flip like the on switch and it just oh and he's goes, doing yeah it yeah, 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 yeah. And it, yeah 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 i know about yeah the song yeah, it's, it's like those bass pro shops yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the same thing but, but I yeah i would say that that's what i i really i'm sad i never got the electric figure the electric gremlin figure yeah, well, all those, like, initial line of NECA figures are, like, over $100, $200 now. Yeah. Um, yeah. Pretty much unobtainable until NECA re-releases them, hopefully. Now that they're doing some Gremlins 2 stuff, they will. They did that. And like we said, the yeah. Demolition Crew and the Brain Gremlin coming soon. Yeah, I really hope so. they re-release uh, that, the mm -hmm. spider spike. Yeah, the there might be a cool. Bat Gremlin at some point. Yeah, yeah, Bat Gremlin. Definitely want a Lenny. <laughs> Mm -hmm. As I, I looked it up last night afterwards, and yeah, it was like one hundred and fifty dollars. I was like, oh, it's fine. That was a like, good. Uh, they had the other one too, right? I, I don't remember his. The, the one that was always with Lenny. They had like the Moby face. I don't know oh, what his George? name was. George, George was that, that his, his name? name? Yeah, I think oh, okay. it's like the gray one ish. He's kind of gray. No, he's like kind of. And it was like the black fur one, and then he had like the white eyes. But he always had like the sourpuss look. I think it's, yeah, George. I think. I like yeah, the Gremlin. Like the um, like like they had red eyes and he had the spikes. Did they call him Spike, with the spikes on his back. The one with the Uzi. Does oh, he have spider. An Uzi? The one that became the spider. I know. Did he become a spider? I can't remember now. He starts out with like the black like mohawk. No. We'll call him mohawk. Mm -mm. No, the one has the spiked back. 
really scary looking. Hmm. I don't remember. I'm You're talking about this from two? Yeah. Yeah, be. that's Spike then. Yeah. The one that turns into the spider. Oh, I, I guess. I guess I don't. Yeah. I guess I didn't like pay attention to that. It was him turning into the spider? But okay. <laughs> 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 yeah, that one. He was really scary looking. I like that one. I, I, I don't know. I don't know why I didn't really like part two. Growing up, I don't know. I just thought it was dumb. <laughs> I really did. I just thought it was dumb when it came out. I was like, nah, nah. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people but now I like it. Yeah. So. A lot of people don't like it, but it seems like lately people are coming around to it. and I, I love it. Like I, like, I think it's, I might like it more than the first one, but the first one is like more nostalgic because I had seen the first one like a lot of times before seeing the second one. And um, and then, like I said, I watch the first one at least once a year, so I've just seen it a lot more times. But I don't always get around to playing the second one. But, but I you know, at least like it as much. I posted watching part two last night on my Instagrams, and I had a lot of comments where people said part two was their favorite over part one. Mm -hmm. So I didn't realize that a lot a lot of people liked part two over part I, one. I think a lot of people don't like the first one because Gizmo gets taken away. Yeah, but he goes back where he should. Yeah. He obviously yeah. wasn't responsible enough right. to take care of him. <laughs> but then, yeah, it's like, I don't know. It's always sad. <laughs> Poor little gizmo. Like, yeah, I just yeah. want them to be friends. <laughs> yeah. in, my, in my brain, though, like, uh, I don't know what happens with Greta, I guess. I'm sure that everything would just go bad again. But uh, I'd like to think that they yeah. just live happily ever after. <laughs> But <laughs> they have little gremlin babies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jeez. yeah. Well, um, so Brian, what do we have for products for gremlins we have here on the table? So we have a ultimate gizmo, yes. which I believe it does come with a Rambo gizmo head. On it. Yeah. The, yes. the, that one, they kind of mixed both movies together. Yeah, they did. Um, which I, I think it, it's a really nice figure. I know... The Santa Stripe one came with like a normal size Gremlin that will fit in a bag. I yeah, believe. well, it's like to scale. Yeah, with, to scale with, the with a Gremlin. Um, but I really love that. And then we have the Ultimate Greta that comes with the uh, chemical bottle and the feather boa. Yay. And there, there are many more... Uh, gremlin figures out there you know okay. you got you got the one for stripe uh that comes with the skateboard and chainsaw uh, you have the flasher uh the video game gremlin gamer the gamer um we don't have any trick-or-treat studios gremlins with us though do we we do not no, we sold, sold out sold out okay sold out sold out of yeah, trick-or-treat studios two gremlins caroler, two packs yeah okay so um they have um like the Olympic Gremlin, the Back to School Gremlin, one of my favorites. Ones that Those I can ads. Yeah, it was that ones I can never find. Yeah, there were Target exclusives. And you can. So was the so was the Santa Stripe, but I randomly found some mm, the yeah. other day. I was in the um, the Carolers for them, right? Or were they Walmart? Um, the I don't know. No, I we, found we, them. We were able to carry the. Were, the were you able to yeah. carry the just, Carolers? Uh -huh. Yeah, I think they're just regular yeah. figures. But like one of them was really rare for like two years. Like you could find one two pack, but you couldn't find, at least me, I couldn't find the other two pack for a long time. And then I eventually, they re recently re-released it in the mm -hmm. past few months. And so now I have a lot of car carolers. <laughs> Cause I had, what I had done was I bought two of the original pack that I could find. And then I was gonna do this whole thing where I was gonna like sew like the hats for the other ones. Cause it's basically the same thing, except right. for like, you know, just the, earmuffs or whatever accessories so i was going to make these like little beanies for one pack but then whenever i was able to just get the new one i just bought that one so now i have six carolers but it's also cool because eventually i want to do like a big diorama that just has like a shitload of gremlins all like going crazy and like i want to get one of those like mini christmas trees that they sell oh yeah and like decorate it all and i want to put like put gizmo, one or two like, in there yeah I want, well i want to <laughs> put gizmo like wrapped in with like tinsel you know because yeah. there's all the scenes like and again it's funny too like i want to do it for the diorama because it'll be funny but like i don't like when they terrorize gizmo like it's, i just love <laughs> gizmo so much like the second one and the first one there's like 
there's all this stuff like what can we what's all the evil stuff that we can do to gizmo and like terrorize him like and it just stresses me out like, i just love gizmo <laughs> <laughs> gizmo is adorable he yeah is. especially in the second one because they have all the animatronics in his face and and his ears get all droopy when yeah. he's sad like, it's so <laughs> sad when face. he's crying because his daddy <laughs> died <laughs> poor gizmo well, we also have this poster, too, from Chris Butler Designs. We'll have available for our signing this Saturday. You can get Zach to sign one of these. They're $12 on the website right now. Um, and then we'll have some autographed ones on the website after the event. And we'll have some other products after the event as well, autographed. Ready to go. What else? I think that's about it, isn't it? What else are we doing? Oh, cult classic coming up. We got that coming mm-hmm. up. End of the month. What What's the date on that? Oh, uh, it's the last weekend. Of Just the last the weekend, isn't 25th it? Twenty fifth through the twenty seventh. Yeah, and it's like a whole bunch of Texas Chainsaw Massacre actors mm-hmm. and actresses and stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Fliss will be there. Mm-hmm. Um, our friend Drew mm-hmm. Marvick will be there, and Joe Bob and Darcy will be Joe there. Joe Bob too. and Darcy. Yeah, there'll be a lot of people there. That should be a fun one. We hadn't done that one before, so to go to texas all these new cons for the first time this year yeah love yeah, it i'm excited I was to see uh see the gas station's gonna be yeah, yeah i'm excited for that too eat some barbecue yeah if we can get a table probably <laughs> yeah i was hopefully it's not a two-hour wait <laughs> true yeah. what um, are we watching next week i think texas chainsaw yeah Mexico. texas chainsaw Chains- that's right yeah because we were talking get about fun house too um so that'll be the following week fun yeah. House. okay so next week we'll talk about texas chainsaw massacre we'll watch that We'll just do the original, yeah. unless y'all want to watch what other ones too, just for fun of it. But I was I'll probably watch the second one. Yeah, because I, I, for me, the second one is probably my favorite outside of the original. Yeah, it's it's funny we're we're doing Gremlins. Mine's and three. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Really. Yours, yours is three. I haven't seen it, so I was I like I. Um, I've heard that it's not good though. I love that one. I'll watch I was I, I, I like them all <laughs> the action figures. Yes, I haven't watched the movie. I yeah, love that one. I, I, I like them all except for the Leatherface one they just did. The brand the the, brand, the newest the one. new one yeah. that came out. Even the remake's what, like, two, not bad. 2 years no, ago. No, the remake's actually pretty good. Yeah, that was the first one that I saw actually cuz I mean I'm a 90s kid so mm-hmm. uh that was the first one that I saw it in theaters I think. And um I, for a long time, I thought that that was the movie, and then I don't know when I was, you know, fourteen or fifteen, I found the original, and then that became like my favorite horror movie for a really long time. The original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and so it's one of my favorites. And then it was a long time until I saw Part Two, and I didn't really know much about it. I didn't know that like Toby, Ho- Toby Hooper directed it, or that it was so different from the first. Mm-hmm. And I really liked that they did that. It, it's similar to what we're talking about today with Gremlins and Gremlins Two, where. They just, um, you know, the first one's kind of more serious or whatever. And then the second one, it's the same people making it. So there's just as much love in it. But they're like, let's do something completely different, different. and make it silly and yeah. fun. And yeah. and that movie's actually, um, Grace hates that movie. She is, like, not because it's bad. Like, she's genuinely terrified of it. She thinks that the second one's scarier than the first one. And, like, it, like Chop Top is just the scariest character of all time to her. And like, oh, we'll have to get Bill Mosley in here mm-hmm. dressed up as Chop Top just for Grace. She, she won't come. <laughs> she won't come. She's she's that afraid of him. Oh, no. <laughs> but um, remember when we were at Texas Frightmare, there was that guy who was dressed up mm-hmm. as him, and he had a really good cosplay. It was yeah, all like did. really legit. And I wanted to take a picture with him, but then I was like, no, I'm not going to because. Um, because Grace would be too scared of it. But then he actually came up to me and wanted a picture with me. Yeah, <laughs> and I, I was like, that. oh, this works perfectly because yeah. I wanted to get a picture with you. And then, so then I, I showed Grace and she didn't like it. Yeah, I bet she didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, it was really, it was a really good cosplay. And that guy was fun. He was dancing around all yeah. night. He was crazy. Yeah, he was a lot of fun. <laughs> I love part two. I, I, yeah, but. Grace, um, See that that took a while to grow on me too. I guess I'm always liking the originals, and I always like the seriousness. And then they always want to make a second part like funny. And when I'm when I was younger, I hated that. I didn't I didn't yeah. like that. I didn't want that. Now I like it. Yeah, being an adult, but just being younger, I didn't like it though. Yeah, it seems like there's a trend to either make it more silly and funny the second time, mm-hmm. or a lot darker. Like yeah. there's other movies too where the where like the second one is is a lot darker than the first one. 
which like obviously like Star Wars and and all those big movies that aren't really like I think when you make a horror movie and it's your only horror movie, obviously you're gonna try to make it really dark and scary. And then whenever you do the second one, it's like, well, we don't want to do that again. So you make it more silly. Mm -hmm. And I think it's like when you make something like Star Wars or Indiana Jones or something, it's like, let's make this big, you know, fun thing. And then it's like, now you want to do something different. So you make it darker. Or whatever, right. So. It's hard for me to adjust to that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but again, I like it now. So it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I need to watch part three. Uh, Philip specifically Leather didn't want to watch another series of movies where we did Ghoulies where we watched three movies and then yeah. you know yeah, Gremlins the, where we watch two but that's I think why I said we'll, he can watch the we'll first one we'll talk about the first yeah. one and then if we all want to watch all the others we can and if we want to <laughs> talk about them we can <laughs> yeah. well I don't have to watch the first one or the no. second one to talk. I mean I didn't have to do that for Gremlins either I watched yeah. part two I didn't watch part one but um, just for fun I watched two because it had been a while but I think for Texas Chainsaw Massacre, I'll, I'll probably just skip the first two because I've seen them so many times and just only watch the third because I haven't seen it yet. So whether Philip likes it or not, I'll probably end up talking about okay, it. Okay, so I'm also the one that likes part four as well. A lot of people don't like the Next Generation with Matthew McConaughey. I love that one. I love, Obviously. love, love Next Generation. I, I, I thought part four was good. I, mean, I know, but a lot of people I know don't like it. I, I think a lot, of, a lot of them are starting to come around now because I of the so. uh, Scream Factory release. Matthew does such a good job in that he movie, does, though. Even Renee Zellweger does. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I really love that one. I don't know. <laughs> I was at, I'll probably watch three and four. Yeah, they're fun. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was at, uh, I randomly saw a, a part three out in the wild the other day. Like, I mean, a NECA like clothed figure for part three and I was like I've never seen this movie but I'm gonna get I this action figure just in case I like the movie yeah, see, it's I, in the clamshell yeah yeah Yeah. yeah if, I, if, if I like the movie then I'll take it out and I'll display it if I don't like it then I'll just eBay that bitch <laughs> <laughs> or give it to a friend who <laughs> wants it go. that's probably I actually I say that as if that's something I do I've never sold something on eBay in my Me life <laughs> I always say that I will and then I end up not and giving it to someone or just keeping it but I'm sure that I'll like it enough to keep it I don't know. I, that's one movie I'm not sure. How if I like, like it or not. Yeah, I don't know. I, was saying, I, shall see. I don't have the figure, but I have a poster signed by a bunch of them. Well, if I don't like the movie, you can buy the figure off me. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and with that said, I think we are at a wrap. And that's it for episode 23. And we will see y'all next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.